1945 under an Air Force contract known as Project MX-774, Convair began a study of ballistic missiles. Defense cutbacks in 1947 literally shelved the project, except for limited research conducted by Convair. In 1951, the Korean War resulted in increased defense appropriations. Convair was awarded a contract under Project MX-1593 to study the merits of ballistic and glide rockets. The ballistic approach was selected as the one with the most potential. Experience gained on MX-774 was put to the test, and the Atlas program was underway. In 1955, the new Atlas program, designated WS-107A1, was given the highest national defense priority. The full-scale missile mock-up ordered by the contract was begun immediately, and by early March, design and construction were well along toward completion for the engineering development inspection scheduled for May. The test vehicle being mocked up is the XSM-65 Series A. It is designed primarily to provide data on two-engine booster propulsion performance in flight, but it incorporates numerous other design features for the operational missile for flight testing at the same time. The nose, however, will not be separable in flight as in the tactical weapon. The propulsion system of this engine test vehicle, or ETV, will be unstaged and will consist of two of these North American turbo rocket engines gimbal mounted in a non-jettisonable skirt. Factory space was allocated for the fabrication of the 16 test vehicles and the space was cleared for the installation of new tooling and the proofing of these tools. In developing this thin-walled stainless steel monocoque structure, a ground test article called the Model 7-4 was built under the previous contract. In January, it was cycled for the determination of its vibration modes and frequencies in the horizontal fixture at the special test site on Point Loma in San Diego. A structural steel dummy of the missile body was erected in the test tower at Point Loma for proofing of erection fittings and gear. The pressurized test article was then remounted in its special handling trailer and transferred to the test tower where it was installed in February. Vertical pressure tests were conducted by filling both propellant tanks with water to determine vertical load and fluid flow characteristics. A vortexing study was made by remote control camera as the tanks were filled through the propellant filling connections. At the same time, a temporary test fixture was built at the Point Loma site for the preliminary investigation of LOX geysering characteristics. These tests were run in March with the locks refrigerated by liquid nitrogen. Back at the factory, the construction of the first of several body component test sections was begun. Here, the ellipsoidal bulkhead that separates the fuel and oxidizer tanks of the missile is heliarc welded in a special welding fixture. The bulkhead sections, or gores, are 0.020 gauge half-hard stainless steel. But seams will be reinforced on the concave side by spot welded doublers. The test bulkhead will be installed in a special 20 foot tank section to prove its structural integrity under various differential pressure loadings. Each complete system, such as the autopilot and electrical systems, will be separately and jointly proved in under operational conditions during full thrust, full duration, captive firing runs of the completed missiles in this special missile systems development stand proposed for an isolated location in Sycamore Canyon on the Camp Elliott military reservation near San Diego. Soil analysis of the site has been completed 
and the detailed design of the facility is now in progress. During the third quarter of 1956, construction work was begun on the new Convair Astronautics Facility near San Diego. Major grading was completed during the quarter, and a contract for initial construction was negotiated with the McNeil Construction Company. The 252-acre site will provide adequate space for scheduled production, affording a comfortable working environment with sufficient room for expansion. Ten minutes northeast of astronautics, work progressed at the Sycamore Canyon static test site. Progress in final assembly during the quarter included final inspection and acceptance of missiles in production and checks of systems installation. By mid-August, a milestone in the Convair Atlas program had been reached with the move of the first missile, designated Missile 1A, into checkout. It is at this point that missile electronic systems checkout is accomplished and necessary installations for test instrumentation are made. On August 29, 1956, Missile 1A became the first Atlas missile to move from Convair's Building 4 to the static test site at Sycamore Canyon. Missile transport was handled easily over a variety of road conditions that are representative of environments to be encountered on longer scheduled hauls. The missile was accompanied by front and rear pilot vehicles and a truck carrying emergency and replacement nitrogen for tank pressurization. Pressure was maintained by the trailer pressurization unit during the 20-mile trip. At North American's Rocket Dine facility near Los Angeles, similar mushrooming expansion has taken place in the building of giant rocket engine test stands. Each of these are capable of withstanding one million pounds of thrust. The official number of this test was 103-1. Missile 3A was the second Atlas missile to be fired in stand S-1, used to check compatibility between the propulsion system and the airframe. On run number 1031, there were three major test objectives. Airframe compatibility, the ability of the autopilot system to hold the engines in a null position, and the function of the missile pressurization system under sustained flow conditions. We fired at 6.54 p.m. Monday, 18 February. 25. Last off, 20. Roger. 20 seconds time. 15. Start tanks ready. Summary of progress in Atlas development during July, August, and September of 1957. It covers the highlights in production, research, development, and testing at the contractor's main plant and six other locations where major tasks were accomplished. At the Point Loma facility, engineers were conducting a variety of tests, which contributed toward a high degree of element design refinement. At Sycamore Canyon, construction was basically complete at the S2 site. While at S-1, pre-flight evaluations with missile 3A were finished and preparations made for start of research and development with missile 9A. The program was advanced at Edwards rocket base with progressive missile tests, while stand 1-4 was being modified for initial testing of B missile systems. The major task in development of Project Atlas is accomplished at the contractor's San Diego plant. This is the final assembly and checkout area on August 21, midway through the quarter. This area is the terminal point for the manufacturing task. This missile is A-series bird number eight in final checkout. Consoles are in use to evaluate components, systems, and integrated systems. 8A will be held at the San Diego plant for detailed factory and engineering evaluations. As an engineering tool, this article will be accessible for developmental studies. B-1 
B-series missiles are now in final assembly. Numbers 1 and 2 are seen here, upper left and middle, adjacent to A-series number 13. Missile 3B was moved into final assembly August 31. The contractor's Point Loma Laboratory is located on a peninsula near the entrance to San Diego Bay. Here, engineers conduct tests of a hazardous nature. A standard production missile tank was transported to the point on July 29. Engineers at Tower A will conduct studies of propellant loading for B-series liquid levels. They seek specific information on characteristics of liquid oxygen and fuel within the environmental conditions of Atlas missile and ground support systems. At Tower E, a series of tests was initiated to verify proper separation of the booster compartment from the missile. A production thrust section was installed during the quarter. It is attached to a stub tank, which duplicates the aft section of the missile. Construction of the new astronautics plant, while delayed due to strikes and other factors, is progressing. Work is well underway on all major items, including the six-story administration building, the reception building, six-story engineering building, engineering laboratories, and the 500,000 square foot manufacturing building, lower right. Assistant Secretary of Defense, William H. Holliday, visited the new facility on July 26. Secretary Holliday and party inspected the model of the plant and toured the construction area. First buildings to be completed will be sections of the engineering laboratories. The new facility will be in full use by early 1958. Sycamore Canyon is located on the Camp Elliott Marine Corps Reservation. In the foreground is the administration building and to the left, storage and shop building. S2 is the second static test site to be constructed at Sycamore. It is to be used in testing the initial B series and later advanced designs. The site was made available to contractor personnel in mid-July. Preparation for functional use of the area began with installation of test support equipment and checkout of facility items. The Air Force granted official occupancy of the facility on August 30. On August 30, 9A was delivered to Sycamore Stand 1. 9A will be used as a research static test article, utilizing vernier and booster engine firings to evaluate and develop components and systems. Edwards Rocket Base is located on Lumen Ridge in California's Mojave Desert. Here, Atlas development was carried on at three test sites allocated to the project. The program at Stand 1-4 for A-series missiles was completed early in the quarter. Two four-second firings were conducted to obtain data for evaluation of engine starting characteristics. Operations were then suspended to permit modification of the stand for scheduled tests of B-series missile systems. Changeover to Series B hardware requires extensive revision of the stand and blockhouse equipment. Instrumentation must be provided for additional systems. On September 19, the B thrust section for Stand 1-4 arrived at the desert site. Delivery was to the assembly building, where it was readied for installation. Mating of the unit to the battleship tank will be accomplished early in the fourth quarter. The second Atlas facility at Edwards Rocket Base is Stand 1A. Static tests here progressed from an early 30-second run 
to a full duration firing, accomplished near the end of the quarter. Firing 108 was set up to meet this objective. This is the Vernier engine at start, followed by booster ignition five seconds later. The run was scheduled for 80 seconds and accomplished at noon on September 10th. More than 400 channels of information were recorded during the test. Primary objectives were evaluation of airborne pneumatics, a new heat exchanger design, heat radiation shield, and thrust section purge system. Secondary objective was to continue observations and record data on all ground support and airborne systems. Run 108 continued for the full scheduled period of 80 seconds. On September 26, engineers and technicians were preparing for the first of three full duration runs of missile 2A. The heat radiation shield and asbestos boot were installed for further evaluation. General Electric engineers set up to obtain data on environmental conditions and performance of guidance equipment. Stand 1A, September 27, run 111. First full duration firing at this site. Information obtained during this and subsequent tests with missile 2A will provide statistical data for determining the reliability index of the Series A missile. The data will be used in the study of the endurance capabilities of integrated missile systems. Run 111 was terminated by the flight programmer after 127 seconds of successful operation. Latest addition to rocket base facilities is Stand 1-1. Major emphasis of tests here has been on the resolution of flight problems. The configuration of missile 5A includes a modified General Electric guidance antenna. An environmental evaluation of this component will be made during hot runs. The Vernier flame deflector at this stand is copper lined. One objective of run 107 was to determine the ability of this item to withstand Vernier flame impingement. The plate behind the vernier is a blast shield, which has been added to all static test stands. Special camera installations have been mounted around and inside of the thrust section. The first shot you will see of run 107 will be from one of the cameras mounted inside of the thrust structure looking toward the flame deflector. Run 107 was the final test of the quarter, accomplished on the last day of the quarter. It was a 30-second Vernier, 25-second booster firing. Data provided backup information for AFMTC in two areas. An investigation of possible causes of fire and a preliminary analysis to determine the most reliable method of fixing launch weight. Flight tests of the Atlas missile are accomplished at the Air Force Missile Test Center. Here, progress toward flight testing is initiated at buildings J and K, Missile Assembly and Administration Center. This is Missile 10A, third flight article, which arrived at AFMTC July 19. At this site, each missile is subjected to inspection, checkout of each component, and performance evaluation of integrated systems. Preparation for flight includes accurate determination of weight and center of balance. The third flight missile is 10A. For the third flight, recoverable motion picture cameras will be mounted inside the thrust section. 10A is scheduled for flight test in November. giant trailers bearing large, cloaked, cylindrical objects have left California and moved across the country to the East Coast. Under the nylon security cover, being transported from factory to test area is Atlas, one of our intercontinental ballistic missiles. The people of America have been little aware of the significance of these movements for 
for most as the trailers rolled over the bridges past the farmlands and through the cities for most people watching this was just another tank or boiler or oil rig too many strange objects have passed over the highways of this country for people to wonder anymore but during 1957 events occurred in other parts of the world that focused attention on these covered missiles the major part of the story on the Air Force's ballistic missile program can be told. It is time for everyone to meet an ICBM, to understand our nation's approach to this important weapon. Here is the missile being raised on its test stand at the Missile Test Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida. This is Atlas, being prepared for flight test in 1957. Concurrency meant that Atlas' first flight would have to take place only nine short months after that first missile left the factory. It is June 11, 1957. Switching command to internal. Test off arm, switch arm. Engine prep complete. Flight plan, hold the missile on the ground for several seconds after engine ignition. After launch, a vertical rise for 15 seconds. Then pitch over into the flight path, continuing to climb until the engines cut off at 127 seconds. Shortly after 24 seconds, a failure occurred involving the B-2 engine. Both engines gave an appropriate response, moving hard over in pitch. Soon thereafter, both engines moved in yaw. At 26.4 seconds, B-1 engine also lost thrust. Missile destruct was initiated by the range safety officer after 50.1 seconds of flight. At the time this film was prepared, recovered parts and telemetering data were being studied to isolate the exact cause of the trouble. Preliminary examination showed that no major failure had taken place. Highlight of the quarter occurred as a culmination of research, development and tests at the four Atlas facilities. This is Complex 14, site of the first flight test. Missile 6A was erected in the service tower on August 2. Engineers made final preparations for flight. On September 25, everything was in readiness for the second flight test. These were the objectives. To determine thrust and impulse, propellant feed characteristics, reliability of the airborne pressurization system, environmental condition of propulsion during flight, 
missile structural integrity, and to establish performance characteristics of the flight control system. hours. Launcher release was excellent. Missile attitude and stability were successfully demonstrated by autopilot performance during initial phase of flight. However, a 17 cycle gimbling frequency corresponding to the third bending mode of the missile airframe was evident from telemeter data. Vibration and autopilot frequency response tests in the region of 17 cycles will be conducted during the fourth quarter. 